Howdy, howdy. Um, pretty sure I'm live. It is like super weird doing it on a computer. So if you can see me and you can hear me uh, and you happen to be there, please drop a line into the comments and let me know that you can see me and hear me. Um, so uh, up here in the Pacific Northwest and especially in the Portland area, um, and I know also some places in California, from what I understand, we are still struggling with some pretty poor air quality. Um, fortunately, my evacuation live last week did not um, end up being something I needed to do, but a lot of people in the Oregon area did have to do that and um, are still, regardless of where they went to, if it was anywhere in the region, they're still struggling with the poor air quality. So um, my first uh ask is that if you have any money or time please throw it to those mutual aid agencies that are um providing relief efforts and uh resources for folks who have been affected by the fires um in really on the entire west coast uh so you know even just a few dollars can help a lot so um that said uh we've had a lot of our clients that have reached out to us saying like hey we can't leave the house and my dog is um driving me up the wall. And um, that's an interesting thing that's happening in my house too, because I actually don't really walk my dog that much, especially my pit bull, Yoshi, uh, but not being able to go outside has really impacted her this week. And so um, she's been definitely like more anxious, a little bit more um, needy and uh, making it hard to work sometimes. So uh, one of the things that I've been doing is trying to make sure that I take breaks during the day and offer her some, uh, some training games, some mental enrichment type stuff. Um, I see some people are watching. Say hi in the comments. It'd be nice to uh, see who you are. And um, last, uh, this past Tuesday, Sarah did a live on passive enrichment with stuff that you can easily make in your house to get your dog's brain going, just get them to earn some of their food. Um, and I urge you to check that out. It's a really great option if you're somebody who's working from home right now, um, especially if you have kids and you're trying to do like online school, plus trying to work, plus trying to manage the dog, get that passive enrichment going. Hi, Kathleen. And, um, but that said, it's also important that you can take breaks and actually interact with your dog because we can't go think, hi Key, hi Jessica, uh, we can't go, um, to the park, we can't go on long walks, uh, which is, like, really difficult for, like, Portland is definitely known, as, we spend a lot of time outside, <laughs> so it's been, um, it's been pretty rough and, um, it's given me an opportunity to uh, to get a little more creative with um, working Yoshi's brain. Fortunately, my other dog is pretty chill and is fine sleeping and cuddling all day, although he will certainly perk right up for a fun. Hi, Kira. Thanks for joining. Um, he will certainly perk up for a fun game as well. So I just wanted to demonstrate a few games that I enjoy doing with my dog. Um, it's going to be a little bit of like training some fun skills. That's fairly easy. Uh, thinking about how we can um, change the way that we interact with our dog just for a few minutes to get them um, using their brains a little bit more. So um, also the lighting is really poor in my house already. And without the sun being available to us, uh, I apologize for any like poor lighting situations. But I'm going to set the computer a little farther down so you can kind of see the space here. And then I'll just um, walk through some games that I like to play with my dog. So... Do you... All right, so we got here some of Yoshi's breakfast and Yoshi uh, mixed with um, just like dehydrated beef. Like it, she will happily work for her breakfast, but I like to spice it up every now and then anyway. So um, the first game that I'm going to show you is uh, called the mouse game. And there's various versions of this out there. I'm going to show you two different ways that you can play and kind of mix it up in terms of energy level for your dog. This is a nice game for building some self-control and um and getting some like uh default stillness from your dog it's also a fun way to get your dog to chase some food so if you have never um if you've never had your dog just work for their daily kibble i urge you to try it uh the first few times you try your dog might be like um what the heck give me that in a bowl but if you persist you will find that the value of your dog's food will often increase if they get to work for it so um take the time and build some value for it you can also just mix it with some tastier stuff like cheese or hot dogs or the dehydrated beef and um, usually that'll get them a little more interested so one of the things to think about when we're just trying to like devise fun games to play with our dog to use their brains a little bit 
is um, think about animating the food. So having them chase the food, having them follow the food in your hand, um, having them figure out how to get the food. These are all ways that we can uh, that we can get tired dogs. A dog that's tired from busy brain work is actually generally a more well-behaved and uh, more healthy tired dog than a dog that's exhausted from like playing truck it all day or um, going to doggy daycare. So um, get your dog's brain working. Dogs are genius. Let's uh, give them a chance to, to figure stuff out. So the mouse game is pretty simple. I am going to uh, take a handful of treats and I'm going to set them on the floor and cover them with my hand. And uh, Yoshi has obviously played this game before. I'm being very patient, good job. Yoshi has obviously played this game before, so she is going to probably offer a default stillness. So she's gonna be nice and self-controlled. Your dog might not be. Oh, really, there we go. So, um, so if your dog decides pretty quickly to try and get the food, that's exactly what they should try to do. Um, your dog is smart, they're going to dig and lick and maybe like try and move your hand and you're just going to wait. And the moment that your dog disengages a little bit, shifts their weight back, um, lays down, sits, turns away, gives you eye contact, mark yes or just feed your dog from underneath your hand. So I'll show you what that looks like. Then I cover the food. For Yoshi, she's already at some more advanced levels. I might like let her see the food. Yes. And I'm just going to mark and give her one treat. Maybe I'll play with the food a little bit. If your dog already um, has some pretty good stillness, you can pretty quickly move on to um, a more advanced level. I will say though, that I ask that you try not to tell your dog to leave it. This is um, about your dog offering choices. So choosing to, um, to have some self-control. And um, she's doing really well. So then I'm gonna make it a little more exciting by, ready? Get it. Oh, you can see it. Let's try it again, ready? Get it, go get it. So um, if you flick the food, you can make them chase it like a mouse running around. Uh, and then I will often go back to, and I often will go back to some stillness where she is, could access the food if she wanted to, but I want her to be still. And if she does not go for the food, she wins a piece of it. Ready? Get it. Just got three pieces left, so I'm gonna have her chase one more, and then I'm gonna release her to the last bits of food. Ready? Get. Some nice stillness. I'm okay with a stand, a sit, a down. I don't mind what she does. Ready? Get it. Um, and then she finishes that handful. A uh, great way to get that nice calmness from your dog. You can increase the difficulty by showing them the food. You can increase the difficulty by asking for a behavior. So maybe they're staring at the food. You ask for eye contact. You can, um, if they're in a down, you could ask them for like a hand target or a sit and then uh, release them to a piece of the food. So get your dog to start thinking while something they want really badly is, um, is available to them. So the next thing that I want to go over is... Um, a pretty fun way to get your dog some physical and mental exercise while uh, in a relatively small space. So um, this is uh, called like object wrapping or just go around. So we are going to work on teaching our dog to go uh, right or left around an object. So when I'm picking an object, I usually will try and pick something that isn't um, easy for the dog to knock over. I want it to be short enough that I can put my hand over it to do some luring if I want to, but I also don't want it to be short enough that the dog's just going to step over it or put their paws on it. Yoshi really likes the two paws on behavior, so she often will offer that um, instead of uh, going around an object. So to be fair, we have trained this before, but she is not uh, super fluent in it. So I'll show you what it looks like um, to kind of start that process of teaching your dog to go around an object. And it's a really nice way to be able to send your dog away and then they come back to you so you can get this nice wrapping back and forth, which is great uh, physical and mental exercise. So I like to use objects that are just found in the space that I'm training in. So I have this weird like back support like knee chair or whatever they are so that's what i'm going to use and i think maybe she and i have done this one other time with this object um and with this particular object i might um i'm gonna sit when i first start doing some object wrapping and of course she's going to offer two paws on because that's what she does that's her favorite behavior and um when i first start this i like to stand really close stand or sit really close to the object 
and I like to reward, I have treats in both hands, and I'll reward the dog on either side. So, um, so I'll start right now with like, get it. So she goes out to the side of my left, she's set up, I can bring her around, and then reward on the other side. Yeah. So it's just a really simple lure to start out. I'm not doing anything fancy. You can absolutely shape this if you're if you have some shaping skills with your dog. Um, I just like to get the behavior a few times, and then maybe I'll wait and see <laughs> and see if she will offer the behavior. Yes, and then I can mark and feed. She's offering other behaviors. So I want to help her. I really try not to make my dog get frustrated. Um, so when she's looking, I might just give her a really simple hand signal. And you will see, you'll see that she is more comfortable going around the object from the right side than she is from the left. So I seem to, yes, I need to help her a little bit more um, coming from the other direction. But if we can give our dogs time to think, yes. Now I'm going to scoot back just a little bit and see if she can offer the same behavior again. Yes! Yes! Good girl! Scoot back just a little bit more. So it becomes more difficult when there's space between you and the object because then your dog, yes! then your dog will want to go between you and the object. So if that's happening, then you have made it too difficult too quickly. Let's scoot a little closer. Let her think. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. We'll count that. I want it a little more smooth, so I'm going to help her out a little bit. Let's back up a little. Job. See if she'll offer. Yes, good girl. Lovely. Go back a little further. Oh, very good. Get it. All right. So just three minutes or so of object wrapping, and Yoshi's had some nice um, physical exercise back and forth, and a really great brain game too. So uh, the important thing when we're teaching our dogs a new behavior like that is that your dog needs to have successes. People try too quickly to go lay down. Um, people try too quickly to make it look super sexy and to get the like really cool send outs and the um, and the speed. But even like Yoshi and I have been working on this off and on for a while, and she's still not super fluent in it. You can see her thinking through the process. So I want her. I want to make sure that she has lots of really successful repetitions at easy levels before I try and make it exceedingly difficult. If your dog, um, if you're in the middle of a training session and your dog gives up or walks away, um, that's a really good sign that you maybe put a little bit too much much pressure, and it's supposed to be fun. So uh, make sure you're getting a high rate of reinforcement and your dog is being successful more often than they are failing. Uh, I really think that's more of a failure of the teacher than it is of the learner. Um, keep it short. So this kind of game, especially when you when that little light bulb clicks on in your dog's head, it um, it's super, super fun and it can make us want to continue to push it maybe farther than we should. So really try and set a timer for like three, four, max five minutes that you're doing these kinds of things. Um, Yoshi is a dog that can play and train all day, but she will uh, definitely start to get tired and um, that's when we start to get behaviors that are uh, less consistent and maybe things I don't want her to practice. Um, the last thing I want to go over is a super simple way to get some really nice focus and enrichment for your dog and just a fun game to play. Have you taught your dog to catch treats yet? If you haven't, you should because trying to beat your record every day of how many treats your dog can catch in a row is super, super fun. And there are lots of really great ways to, um, to maximize and um, go to the next level and make it quite a bit more complicated in terms of treat catching. Treat catching is a really great way to get some focus from our dogs, especially in a distracting environment. So I build a lot of value for treat catching at home, and then we go out and we can use it in other environments. It's also a great way to increase the value of your reinforcer. So Yoshi, even after she's had all of her food and is like pretty not interested in her kibble, she will still catch kibble because she enjoys the act of... Um, of the way that the reward is being delivered. So if you have never taught your dog to catch, every dog can catch, except maybe if they're blind, although I do know people who have taught blind dogs to catch too. You just have to be a little more intentional about how you throw it. Um, so I think that uh, take, the, take your time. Some dogs will take months to learn it. Some dogs can figure it out fairly quickly. But I suggest you start with some like larger treats that are bright colored. So like um, chunks of cheese 
popcorn is really great because it kind of like floats through the air and um and like pieces of grilled chicken so things that they can easily see and that are large enough that they can catch them fairly simply and when you start um i would like you like give me a little bit of space crazy um you want to just lob it towards your dog's face <laughs> you missed the first one and um and try and just hit them like right between the eyes there and i usually would stand up but you're not gonna be able to see my head so i'm not gonna do that um and give your dog lots of easy wins initially and once your dog is reliably catching treats then i encourage you to try dropping treats directly above their head it's okay if they don't catch them just the fun is in the game it's not so much in your dog being successful although that's satisfying too I'm gonna grab a few more treats to show you what it looks like to get a little bit more focus. So I might ask my dog to stand just to the side and just start dropping treats into her mouth. And I want her to come back to position. I don't necessarily uh, want her to start like figuring out a little bit of body awareness. Maybe I'll move up a little higher. Just figure out her timing. Maybe I'll shift it backwards a little bit. Can she walk backwards? Yes, she can. Maybe I'll bring it forward. See if she'll follow my hand. Nice way to build some focus. Oops. She had three pieces stuck in the back of her throat there. Just an example of how the food isn't super important to her. It's really about how it is delivered. She just really enjoys playing games. Um, you can imagine how quickly you could progress to being able to walk around your house with your dog totally focused on your hand, just like Yoshi is. Um, and then, let me finish it up, come here. One more, a few more treats in my hand. Oop. See if she'll come back to underneath my hand. Yes, good. And then I just like to finish the last few by um, typically I'll just like toss some treats on her bed, which is often my cue for uh, training session is over. Please go settle. If your dog tends to be really, really, really excited by these types of games, which lots of dogs are, especially the dogs that I tend to work with, um, then I suggest that you um, offer like a little like a long term chew or do some boundary games or some capture and calm to transition out of um, out of super fun training time. Um, so that your dog isn't like, hey, more, more, more. It is kind of rude to just end the conversation in the middle of it. So if you just, like, are tossing treats and then just walk away, it makes sense that your dog would follow you and be like, hey, where's the interaction going? So um, give them some kind of transition to make that a little easier and to make it feel less punishing. Um, thank you all for joining. And um, if you have any other games that you really like to play with your dog in the house, um, one of my other favorites for sure is hiding treats or hiding... Um, items that my dog has been trained to find. Um, scent work is a great way to get your dog's brain um, pretty tired. And now Yoshi is asking me to fill up her treat ball because she is not done learning and training actually. Um, so we're gonna work on some bed games while I get back to work. Um, have a lovely day and please stay safe. Uh, support your friends, your community, reach out to people and um, good luck. <laughs>